How do I find the right keywords? This is a question almost everyone asks themselves when first starting Google Ads, and it's one of the most important factors in Google Ads that determines long-term success. If you don't have the right keywords, there is a massive chance you will lose money. Now in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to find keywords that produce results. But in order to figure out what keywords we're gonna go after, we first need to start with a few basic keywords for our industry. Every industry is somewhat different, so your keywords are gonna be slightly different. We work exclusively with service-based businesses. So if you think of HVAC, fencing, pool installation, plumbing, services like these, if you take your industry, so let's do plumbing, you could do plumbing services near me, you could do plumbing company near me, plumbing repair, Keywords like that, if you come up with three or four of them, very similar to that, I would add a modifier onto the end of plumbing, HVAC, pool installation, and just put services, installation, uh, companies near me. Those are the keywords we're going to need right off the bat, and we're going to enter that into our keyword planner, and then we're actually going to be able to come up with a whole list of keywords that we actually want to go after that have high buying intent and are going to be better than other keywords and are going to produce better results over the long term. Now I'm gonna pull up my Google Ads account and we're gonna come over here to tools and settings. So if you've come up with your three or four keywords, again, they don't have to be super complicated. The keyword planner right here is where we're going to. And then we're gonna hit discover new keywords. Now this is super important. Please do not skip this step. If you do, you're not gonna have the correct data. What we have to do is geo modify this for our location. So as you can see here, it says Canada. We need to click on Canada and change this to the actual area we will be advertising in. For this account, we're gonna to do Toronto, Ontario. Here in Canada, we'll do Mississauga. And we will do Hamilton, Ontario as well. And then all we have to do is come down here and hit save. Once we've added the correct advertising locations, we're gonna be advertising it. So we just hit save. And then we're gonna type in the actual keywords we wanna go after. So for this one, let's do pool installation. So pool installation is easy. Again, if you're doing uh, plumbing, you could do plumbing repair, plumbing services, plumbing companies near me. This shows buying intent right off the bat. Uh, these keywords are pretty generic for any industry. So if you had HVAC, you could add those modifiers right after it. So HVAC services near me, um, AC repair, heating repair. If you're doing fencing, you could do fencing repair, fencing installation. Again, the keyword with a modifier associated with it so it has buying intent you don't want just a vague word like pools or hvac because most of the time if you put too broad of a word right off the bat google's just going to show your ad for everything because if someone types in pools they could be looking for images of pools they could be looking for pools near them that they could go swimming in there's a lot of things that they could mean by just pools but if someone types in pool installation chances are they're actually looking to get a pool installed same with hvac if someone types in hvac they could be looking for jobs they could be looking for diy they could be looking for tech support there's a whole bunch of stuff that they could be looking at other than actually buying your service. So it's very important to put these buying modifiers after it and show high buying intent. So for this one, we'll do pool installation. We'll put fiberglass pools, which is a type of pool. If you're not familiar with it, fiberglass pool installation, and we will do in-ground pool installation. And then once we have our words, all we have to do is hit get results. Again, if you're in HVAC, you could do AC repair, which is again, type of uh, heating and cooling. So if you have a certain type of even fencing or a certain type of plumbing that you do specifically commercial or residential, these are really good buying indicators of someone actually wanting to purchase your services instead of just a vague keyword like pools or plumbing or HVAC, stay away from vague keywords, go with high buying intent keywords is my recommendation. So all we have to do is hit get results now. And as you can see, we have a whole bunch of keywords Google provides us with. And the important thing here to note is the average monthly searches. I see so many accounts, they'll build up tons of ad groups, they'll have so many keywords. And the issue with that is if there is no monthly searches, it doesn't matter how good your ad is, it doesn't matter how big your budget is, your ads are not going to show because no one is searching for them. So it is very important that we find keywords with search volume behind them. If we don't, our ads aren't gonna show and we're not gonna get any leads. So it's very important, have people searching for these keywords, please make sure your keywords have them. Now, how many searches should we have? And that's really industry specific. I generally recommend having at least three keywords in the neighborhood of 1,000 to 10,000 searches a month. That generally gives a very good amount of searches that you could spend anywhere from 1,000 to $10,000 and actually spend that budget and see some results. 
Anything less than that, you might be struggling to actually get impressions. But then again, there are exceptions to the rules where some clicks may be really, really expensive. So you won't need as many searches and the opposite could be true. They could be really cheap and you'll need more searches. So it's up to you. But I would recommend for most service businesses, you want at least three keywords in the area of 1,000 to 10,000 searches a month. That way you can have sustainable leads coming in month after month and you're going to be happy with your account. Now, I don't worry too much about top of page bid low range and high range unless we're determining the maximum cost per click. If you're doing a maximum click strategy, this is important. I would recommend averaging out the highest two numbers. So I'd probably take $15, add that up uh, with $4 and you should be bidding somewhere around $10, even $11 uh, if you're doing the maximized click strategy. But this is on keyword research. So we're going to kind of skip that part. Uh, we have a whole bunch of videos on maximized clicks and why I think you should start your campaign with that. If you're in the service-based business, check that out if you're interested but we're gonna leave that alone for now. Now, once we have a whole bunch of keywords with good monthly searches, we can scroll down here and start building out ad groups. And this is super important because we want our ad copy to be as relevant as possible and more relevant than our competitors. If we can make our ads more relevant than our competitors, chances are the individual searching for our services is gonna click on our ad instead of theirs. And what I mean by this is if someone types in fiberglass pool installation and our ad pops up and it says fiberglass pool installation, and then our competitor's ad says pools, chances are they're going to click on us because they're more comfortable looking at fiberglass pool installation. That's what they wanted. They don't want just pools. They don't know what they're getting with pools. If our say fiberglass pool installation, get a quote now, they know what they're getting. They know exactly what we have to offer. Whereas if the ad is super vague and it just says pools, they don't know what they're getting. Is it a area where you go for swimming lessons? Is it, you know, they're just looking at images of pools. You need to be very specific with Google ads and that's how you're going to get a leg up. So we need to break each one of these keywords down into their own ad groups. I recommend building out a spreadsheet like the one I have here. So as you can see, these are going to be all the keywords we're going to be adding to these ad groups. So we have the pool installation ad group, fiberglass pool installation ad group, vinyl and in-ground pools ad groups. Again, this is all going to be unique to your circumstance. So if it's HVAC, you could do AC and heating. Uh, you could do HVAC services. You could do HVAC repair. These all could be different ad groups because the actual keywords are very different and they all need their own separate ad. And I should point out that the way we determine whether or not a keyword should go in an ad group is if this ad popped up and it said pool installation for that specific keyword, I'd be completely fine with the keyword pool installation and then the ad saying pool installation. That makes sense. But if someone typed in pool installation and a fiberglass pool installation ad popped up, that would not be okay. So fiberglass pool installation needs its own ad group and needs its own ad. And the same goes with vinyl pool installation. If someone types in vinyl pool installation, we want an ad that says vinyl pool installation. We don't want an ad that says generic pool installation. This is very specific to the per customer's problem and therefore it should have its own ad. That being said, don't go overkill with it. If it says vinyl swimming pool installation, that can go in the same ad group. And I'm gonna show you a few examples here of what I mean by that. So if we come down here, we could do in-ground pool cost. We can copy this over, that could go in here. And I recommend looking for keywords, again, that show high buying intent installation, cost, looking for a quote, services near me, all of these have buying intent behind them. Whereas if you just go with, again, a vague term, you're not going to have the same amount of success and the same high conversion rate that you want. And the lead quality is going to severely deteriorate if you go after these vague keywords and you're going to be spending a lot of time dealing with customers that aren't that interested as compared to when you go with the high buying intent keywords. Most of the time they are a bit more expensive when it comes to cost per click. But if you have a whole bunch of them, you can really reduce costs and you're going to be happy with the quality of the leads because I would rather only have to deal with two or three leads to close a customer instead of 50 to 100 leads. And that is a real expectation. I'm not making that up. I know several companies who take in hundreds of leads a day and they close maybe one or two just because the leads are of so poor quality. So you have to factor in a lot of things. What is the business owner's time worth? What is the salesperson's time worth? How much are they actually willing to spend on these ads? A lot of these factors you have to take into account and then figure out what the best game plan is. But for most service-based businesses, they should be going after keywords with super high buying intent, like installation, like services near me, like companies near me. This will produce the best results for you and you're going to waste almost zero ad spend. So that's what I would recommend. Let's continue to scroll through here. So pool installation near me, that can go uh, right into pool installation. That's fine. Uh, pool builders. I would actually put this into its own ad group because pool builders is very different than actual pool installation. So we'll put pool builders into its own ad group. So pool builders, we'll extend this out. 
that's cool. And then I'll actually just copy pool builders and add that as its own keyword. We'll continue scrolling down pool contractors that could go into its own ad group. Um, this is this is interesting. So above ground pool installation. Say we don't do above ground pool installation. I would recommend jotting this down. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this into a negative list. So I'll put it down here. Let's put negatives. And I'll put this as red just so we see this because we know that above ground pool installation is getting searches. We don't want to appear for that. And since there are people searching for this, we need to let Google know that, hey, I don't want to appear for above ground pool installation. And because a lot of these keywords are very similar, like pool installation, even if we're using exact match, and especially if we're using phrase match or broad match, where your ads can just appear for almost anything that is relevant to these keywords. That's why I generally recommend starting every campaign off with exact match. You're not going to waste as much money. Um, I would tend to stay away from phrase match or broad match if you're not new to Google ads, just because you're going to burn a lot of money. But even in exact match, you're the most strictest. We only want this particular keyword. You're still going to pop up for keywords that you don't want to pop up for. Now, it's important to let Google know right away, hey, we don't want to pop up for any of these keywords. So I would jot down these keywords that we know are getting search volume under the negative list. And then as soon as we create this campaign and these ad groups, I would put these into the negative list so we don't appear for them. So that's a nice little trick to do. So you reduce the amount of wasted ad spend, which is very, very good thing to do. Uh, let's see what else. Fiberglass pool costs. We can put that in here. And then I would go through and I would build out these ad groups. Now, not every ad group is going to have tons of keywords. It might have, you know, two, three keywords, and you could have upwards of 10, maybe even 15 keywords if they're all relevant and they're all getting searches. Now, I don't generally recommend putting a ton of keywords into every single ad group. Google ads has really switched to an automated strategy where it has a lot of control, even with exact match. So you can appear for a lot of stuff. So you don't have to go crazy with these keywords, but I would recommend putting as many relevant keywords into these ad groups as possible. And someone typed in fiberglass pool installation. It's in an ad group that says fiberglass pool installation and your ad says fiberglass pool installation. That way our ad and our message is as relevant to the customer as possible. Our click through rate is going to be sky high. Our costs are going to be much lower than the competition and we're going to have a better quality score. We're going to be able to actually get more leads than the competition competition and Google ads is going to be profitable for us. So I would go in, I would build out all these ad groups to the best of my ability. And then I would create these ad groups and then I would run them and test them and see what is going on. And what's really important is to actually go in and optimize these keywords. And what I recommend doing for keywords is once they have 10 clicks, making a decision on whether or not you're going to keep this word. So if vinyl pools is doing really well. Uh, it has two conversions and we normally aim for a 20% conversion rate. So two out of 10, um, once it has that, I would say, Hey, is this cost per conversion? Good. Is it not good? And then make a decision on whether or not to pause it or keep it going. So if you want to pause a keyword, all you have to do is hit pause. If you want to enable it and keep it going, just leave it as enabled. It should be green by default. Uh, but if you don't want it to run, just hit pause. If it is one out of 10 conversions, I would look at the cost per conversion, see if that's converting. All right. If you have a super low cost per conversion, I would tend to keep it just because we're getting a really good deal on it. If it has zero conversions for 10 clicks, chances are this keyword is bad and you can turn it off. But that's the very important part. I have an entire video on keyword optimization and how to actually optimize your account. I'll link it up below. Uh, it also has the Google ads optimization checklist. I'll link that down below as well. Uh, if you're interested in optimizing your campaign to its fullest potential. Now that is keyword research for Google ads in a nutshell. It does take time, but it pays off in dividends. If you can skip all of the worthless keywords that are just super vague and you can go straight into the meat and potatoes of it and just start getting really good quality leads, Google is going to be able to optimize so much quicker. You're going to get so much higher quality leads and you're going to make a whole bunch more money because you're not spending money on all these vague terms. You're only spending money on super high buying intent words like pool insulation, HVAC services, plumbing services, stuff like this that shows real buying intent from the customer's perspective. So you should be far ahead of your competition. Now I do have one massive favor to ask from you. And if you like this video at all, please hit the thumbs up button. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos and I really enjoy doing them and it really helps with the Google algorithm and allows my channel to grow much faster than it would if you didn't hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't like the video, you can give it a dislike. Uh, it's up to you, but I would really appreciate the thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care and check out the Google Ads optimization checklist if you're looking to improve your Google Ads account. Take care.